Hello and welcome back. My name is Casey. I am an OBGYN physician. I recently graduated from residency this past July of 2024. And this is a place where I have started to provide resources and tips for current and future OBGYN residents. Today's video is going to focus on how to take a proper obstetric and gynecologic history when you are assessing your patients. As a reminder, before I jump in, if you are interviewing for OBGYN residency slots this year, I have created a 15 page guide of what I think are the most important questions that you should ask during your OBGYN residency interviews. You can download that from a link in my description box below and feel free to share that if you're not, but you know anyone else who is going into interview season this year. So just like with any other patient that walks in through triage or that you're seeing in clinic, if you've never seen them before, you want to get the usual points of history, such as a surgical history, a past medical history, allergies, medications, and their social history. If the patient comes into clinic for the first time as a new OB visit or a new GYN visit, there are certain questions that you want to ask to obtain a more detailed history for both these categories in obstetrics and gynecology. So if it's a new OB visit, meaning that this is the patient's first prenatal visit in their pregnancy, or if you are seeing them on labor and delivery or in triage and you don't have all of their history, this is what you wanna ask them. First, you need to clarify what their Gs and Ps are. That stands for gravidity and parity. So the G's or gravidity represents the number of times that a patient has been pregnant, including the current pregnancy. Whereas P's are the outcomes of each of those pregnancies. So if a patient is pregnant for the first time, they would be a G1 P0 because we don't actually know what the outcome of that pregnancy is going to be. Parity has four categories and the way that I remembered them as a medical student was TPAL. T stands for term pregnancies, which means pregnancies that were delivered at 37 weeks, zero days or beyond. P stands for preterm, so pregnancies that were delivered less than 37 weeks and zero days, but greater than or equal to 20 weeks and zero days of gestation. A stands for abortion, and as a reminder, abortion does not mean that the pregnancy was electively terminated. It also represents miscarriages or spontaneous pregnancy loss. These abortions are pregnancies that have been lost less than 20 weeks and zero days of gestational age. Lastly, L stands for living. So if a patient became pregnant with her first pregnancy, during the pregnancy, she would be a G1P0. If she delivered that pregnancy at 38 weeks and that was a live born baby, she would then be a G1P1001. If she delivered that baby and it was a stillborn, then she would be a G1P1000. When you see these patients in clinic for the first time, you want to figure out what their Gs and Ps are, as we call it. And in order to do that, you're going to have to ask them how far along were they when they had each of their babies, have they had any miscarriages or terminations, and were all of their infants live born at birth. In addition to that, you want to find out about any birth events. First and foremost, were their deliveries vaginal or by C-section? And if they had any C-sections, you want to ask them what was the reason that you had to have a C-section for. I also like to ask them if they had any associated complications with the surgery or post-operatively. And if they had a vaginal delivery, there are a couple other questions that you want to ask as well. You want to find out if they had a shoulder dystocia, and the way that I phrase this question for patients is, did any of your babies ever get their shoulder stuck when you were delivering? The next thing you wanna find out is whether or not they had any operative deliveries. And that means, did their doctor at the time of delivery have to use forceps to help get the baby out or apply a, a vacuum to the baby's head to help get the baby out? And the way that I usually phrase this is, did the doctor have to use a suction cup or forceps to help get the baby out? Then I want to know if they had to have an episiotomy or if they had any third or fourth degree lacerations. The way I phrase this, because patients don't always remember or know, is that for an episiotomy, I'll ask them, did the doctor ever have to make an incision or make a cut with scissors to get the baby out? Or did you have any really bad tears that took a very long time to heal from? Because generally first and second degree lacerations heal very well and within a six week period. So if it took them months to heal, then there's a possibility that, you know, maybe they had a larger laceration. And lastly, as far as birth events go, I do want to know if the patient had any postpartum hemorrhage or a blood transfusion. 
And I'll usually just say, did you have any really bad bleeding after delivery? Or did you become very anemic requiring blood transfusion? In addition to the G's and P's and any specific birth events, you also want to know if they had any complications or medical conditions that affected their prior pregnancies, such as gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and so on. So I'm gonna move into talking about how I obtain a gynecologic history. And it's worth noting that if I have a patient who's coming in for a gynecology visit, I'm not going to ask them quite so many detailed questions about their obstetric history, particularly if they're perimenopausal or postmenopausal. But the pieces of information that you do need to obtain are their G's and P's, and you do wanna know if they had all vaginal deliveries or if they had any C-sections. Now, when a patient comes in for a new gynecology visit, these are the pieces of information that I want to obtain to get an expanded history. So I do want to obtain a targeted family history. Specifically, I will ask them if they have any family history of any gynecologic cancers, such as breast cancer, cancer of the uterus, ovaries, or cervix, as well as colon cancer. Then I'm gonna jump into their menstrual history. And the first thing that I wanna find out is how old were they when they had their very first period? This is called the age of menarche. If they are more senior, then I will ask them as well, how old were they when they went through menopause? Or when was their very last period that they remember having? If they are menopausal, I also want to ask them if they've ever been on any type of hormone replacement therapy. And if they're currently menstruating, I have to ask them several more questions. I want to know how many days does your period usually last for? What is the flow like? And the way that I find this out is just by asking how many pads or tampons do you usually have to go through in a day? I also will ask them if they have regular monthly cycles and about how many days there are between day one of a period to day one of the next period. In addition, I'll ask them if they have any associated menstrual symptoms such as severe pelvic pain versus mild cramps versus mood changes. I keep having to move because of this bar of light here. The next part of the gynecologic history is identifying if they know if they have had any uh, sexually transmitted infections in the past. So I will approach this by saying, have you ever had any vaginal or pelvic infections like gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, or syphilis? I like to name a few of them just because sometimes if you don't name any of them, they might not actually remember. And those are the very pertinent ones that I do want to know about. I will also ask them about their sexual history, firstly, how they identify and what pronouns they prefer and whether or not they're currently sexually active. And the way that I phrase this, that's kind of a gentle and easy way to address it is I'll say, are you currently sexually active? And if they say yes, then I will say, um, do you have male partners, female partners, or both? In addition to that, I will also ask them if they ever have any pain with intercourse. And then that's a whole different can of worms because then you wanna ask them, at specific points in intercourse, when is the pain worse? But we don't need to cover that right now. Lastly, I do want to know about their pap smear history. So I want to know when was your last pap smear and do you get regular pap smears? What was the result of the last pap smear? As in, was it normal or abnormal? So usually I'll say, when was your last pap smear and what was the result? And have you ever had any abnormal results? If they say yes, they have had abnormal results, then I'll ask them a couple more questions, such as, did you ever have to have any biopsies or procedures? Because typically if you have an abnormal pap smear, we'll either follow it up with a repeat pap smear a little bit earlier than we normally would have, or we'll perform a biopsy. And if that biopsy is abnormal, then we will perform an excisional procedure such as a leap or cone. And just like I mentioned earlier, if I have a patient who's coming into clinic for a new OB visit or a pregnant patient that's coming to labor and delivery for a scheduled induction or C-section or you know coming in through triage, I'm going to focus more on the obstetric related questions. The gynecologic questions that I will ask will be if they have a history of abnormal pap smears and if they have a history of STIs. I won't usually go into that much depth for patients that are specifically at a visit for pregnancy related care. All right, that is everything for today's video. I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you next week.